We're just gonna introduce these guys. This is probably way too much. We're gonna add it to our bottle. I always underdose because I'd rather underdose than overdose. I don't wanna kill my fish. Now the color of the water's gone that slight like greenish tinge. So that's completely normal. That's harmless to the fish and they're gonna do that. Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, I thought I'd take the opportunity of getting new fish to show you guys something that I think is super, super important in regards to quarantining new fish. Now, when we get new fish, a lot of people don't realize, especially when you've got a ton of fish like in a fish room, the risk you are taking by getting those new fish. Now, what I mean by risk is the risk of bringing in new diseases into your fish room and contaminating other tanks, and also the risk of just having ongoing disease in your fish tanks. So a really big part of getting new fish, whether you have only one fish tank or you have a ton of fish tanks, is quarantining those fish and making sure that you don't have any long-term problems or any problems that can come into your fish room over a long period of time or a short period of time. Now in today's video I've recently picked up these guys which are some neon tetras and I picked these guys up today. Now I picked up about 30 of them. For a guy with a lot of fish tanks it might seem overkill what I'm doing with these guys in regards to the quarantining but I'm doing a really really big quarantine with these guys because I'm planning on doing a lot of breeding with them and I'm going to be making videos of that very shortly in some upcoming videos so stay tuned for that but I've talked about this before and I've talked about it countless times neon tetras especially have a lot of problems and I don't want any of those problems coming into my fish room and I also don't want to have neon tetras with these problems permanently so there's gonna be a video up in the top left hand corner you guys can watch on the issues with neon tetras but I'm specifically talking about that neon tetra disease which is a microbacterium which just seems to affect the fish over a long period of time and I want to do like the most I can to make sure this doesn't get into the fish room especially when I do the breeding now what this kind of tends to be is like these little white patches on the fish that come out they can cause growths on their mouths or you know on their fins and things like that and we just don't want that especially in our brood stock so I've picked these guys up as brood stock and I'm going to be using these for my breeding now you can see here I've just got this new tank I've completely drained the tank and I've let it dry out and you might think this is just overkill I was previously using this for discus grow outs and the reason I've drained it is just so that there can't be anything in here really surviving I'm going to fill this tank up with tap water and treat the tap water I'm going to show you guys and explain to you guys my process and my thinking as I introduce these fish into the fish room. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fill up this tank. Then we're going to introduce our fish by acclimating. And I'm not going to really talk about that too much. I'm just going to float these guys and slowly introduce them. And then once we've introduced them, I'm going to do a big potassium permanganate treatment, which I'm going to show you guys how to do. And I think that a lot of people should be using this for things like neon tetras or rams and especially discus. And I'm going to show you guys how I do that treatment. And then we're also going to talk about some of the other treatments that you might want to do with other certain types of fish. So I guess let's fill up this tank and get these guys in there. Okay, so you can see I've got my bags in here with our little neon tetras and I've acclimated these guys for a good 15 minutes now and I'm going to introduce them to their tank so I'm just going to introduce them and you can see we've only got a sponge filter in this tank at the moment because we're just going to grow some like beneficial bacteria in our sponge filter and it's just going to help keep the tank a little bit clean but we're just going to introduce these guys and they're all going to be obviously washed out and stressed out. So I did buy quite a few of them, I bought about 30 of them because it gives me a good range of fish to use for brood stock. So that's our first bag of these little guys and we'll introduce these other guys as well. These ones are a little bit smaller, that's alright, they'll grow up. Okay, so you can see now we've introduced our little neon tetras and there's a few in here that I'm probably going to have to cull from the get-go. So there's like one female, I don't know if you can see her, she's like kind of around there and she's just not looking that great. So she'll probably have to get culled because I just don't think she's going to make a recovery. But the first thing I like to do, especially with neon tetras, is just try and eradicate everything that could be going on in this tank. Now, I'm going to probably scare a lot of beginners and I don't want to do that because this is going to be something that's pretty easy to do. And I know that a lot of people will be scared of it like I was scared of it at the start, but I really can't recommend this treatment enough. And a lot of people are going to think this is pretty full on for the first day of these guys being in this tank, but they're definitely going to be able to manage it. And what we're going to do to start off with is that potassium permanganate treatment or that PP treatment. Now, if you were wondering what potassium permanganate is, is basically this. Now, you can get this from most of your chemists and you can probably buy it online and things like that. What it is, it's a, like a crystalline powder. So if I open this up, you can see in there we've got like a powder and we really only need a small amount of this stuff to do a treatment and it's super, super effective. 
tested. Now I've had this for quite a long period of time and I've treated hundreds and hundreds of fish with this stuff and it works magnificently. So you can get this at your chemist. It's about 15 bucks for this amount. Like I've got 50 grams here and this is gonna last me heaps and heaps for a huge fish room. So you probably don't even need as much as I have. And what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna mix it up into a water bottle with some tap water. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it to our aquarium and mix it into the aquarium. What it's gonna do is it's gonna make the water purple and that means that the chemical's active in there. And then the water's gonna go to like a ready sort of brown once it's done activating and we can take it out. If it doesn't go ready brown after like an hour, you can just do a 50% water change. You can either add hydrogen peroxide or you can just add your normal tap water, which I do to make it really, really simple. And you can just do a 50% water change, fill it back up and the fish are absolutely fine. But what this will do is it'll eradicate gill flukes. It'll eradicate hopefully that neon tetra disease if there's any in that water. And it's just gonna kill anything that's in the water. So you're gonna wanna take your sponge filter out. You're not gonna wanna do this with things like shrimp. It'll kill shrimp for sure. And I've actually noticed as well with small plecos and things like that, I don't really deal with that. So that's why you wanna have like a quarantine tank. This is gonna be really good for tetras, cichlids, discus, rams, angelfish, all that kind of stuff. This is a really, really good first treatment to use just to kill anything that you might not be thinking of. I'll show you how I mix this into a bottle. Okay, so all you're gonna need for this treatment is a water bottle with some tap water. So this is a little bit discolored because I've used this bottle for treatments before. You're gonna need your potassium permanganate and like a little spoon. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna open up our bottle and we're gonna use the teeniest amount of potassium permanganate. Now, this is gonna really confuse people because there's no given dose because everyone's gonna have a tank with different amounts of bacteria in it. So the amount of potassium permanganate you're gonna need is gonna be different for every setup. But I just want you to eyeball this because we're making like a diluted mixture of this chemical because then we can perfectly control the amount that we wanna to add to our aquarium. So what I'm gonna do is open this up and take out my spoon. And for this tank, we're probably not even gonna need to use this amount. Like you can see on the spoon there, it's like nothing. This is probably way too much. We're gonna add it to our bottle, close it up, and you don't wanna get this on your skin. You should probably wear some kind of goggle or something like that. Get your bottle, shake it up, and really get it mixed in there. It's gonna make this like really strong purple mix. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding this to our aquarium. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take out our sponge filter because our sponge filter is gonna have heaps of bacteria in it that we don't wanna kill because this is gonna keep our aquarium clean afterwards. The filter bacteria is really important. We don't wanna kill that. So we'll take our sponge filter out and we're just gonna swap that for a air stone just so these guys have a bit of oxygen throughout the whole process because we don't wanna suffocate our fish. And then we're gonna grab our mixture and we're just gonna slowly add it to the aquarium until we reach our desired color. Now I'm gonna flash up a sample on the screen so you guys can take a screenshot of that. And we're gonna aim for that color. Now I always underdose because I'd rather underdose than overdose. I don't wanna kill my fish. You can see we're adding it into the aquarium now. And we're gonna get that nice purple color. Now, a lot of people are just gonna ignore me in this video. They're gonna click away and they're gonna think, why is he even doing this? This is super unnecessary. This looks super complicated. Trust me, if you're following all the steps that I'm showing you right now, this is not gonna be complicated at all. And it's gonna help you just have so much more success, especially with all of your cichlids and all those just weird diseases that rock up in your aquarium. I'd rather do this than have to deal with some weird kind of thing in my aquarium later on. So you can see we're mixing it now. You wanna be able to see all the way through. This is about the color we're gonna go for. I could probably dose a little bit more, but I'm not gonna because he's a smaller fish. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave this and I'm gonna check up with you guys when it reaches a different color. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna activate. It's gonna kill all the stuff in this water, except for the fish, obviously. The fish are gonna breathe it into their gills and it's gonna kill all those gill flukes that might be in there. And it's hopefully gonna kill any of that microbacterium that's gonna be in the water. So we'll just leave these guys for the next 15 minutes or until we get that desired color and I'll check up with you guys again. Alrighty, so it's been a good 25 minutes now and you can see that this has changed color. Now, I'm gonna call it quits early. Normally I'd let this go for a little bit longer like and make it really, really red. But because it's taken so long to get to this point, my belief is that there's just not a lot of stuff in here that's treating because it's not converting quickly. Normally in an aquarium with tons and tons of stuff like bacteria and parasites, it would go brown really, really quickly. And I'll flash up a photo of like the color brown that I'm talking about when it's completely done and you should do a water change. A lot of people are scared of doing this because they think they're gonna kill their fish. And the reality is they can really withstand it quite well. So don't be too afraid with doing this treatment. It's actually really, really safe. The reason a lot of people don't do this is because they don't have like some kind of quarantine tank so you want a tank with just like an air stone and something that just holds water you can literally just do this in like a big plastic tub that's absolutely fine so I think this is really crucial I'll probably do another one off camera in a couple days time just to make sure there's absolutely nothing in here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drain it down to about here 
fill it back up with tap water and I'm gonna explain a few things about quarantining that I would probably do myself and some things that you guys should definitely know about quarantining. And I'm gonna also show you that this is gonna go like this kind of weird color and not to be worried of that because I just want you guys to understand how this treatment works and how beneficial this is. So I'm gonna do that water change and I'll check up with you guys after. Okay, so we've just done that water change and you can see here now the color of the water has gone that slight like greenish tinge. So that's completely normal, that's harmless to the fish and they're gonna do absolutely fine now. And that means the whole treatment's done. Now, like I said before, you can definitely do a treatment in a couple days time just to make sure there's nothing in the water, but I highly recommend doing a treatment like this. I do it for pretty much anything new that I bring into the fish room. And especially with a fish like the Neon Tetra that's just known for having problems, I can't recommend it more. Now, what I'm also gonna do is another thing that's really important for when you get new fish, and that's feeding. So what I like to feed is baby brine shrimp, and you can see here I'm about to introduce a bunch of baby brine shrimp into this tank. And the reason I introduce baby brine shrimp is because it's a nice little critter for them to eat. It's really appetizing because it jumps around. It's grown in salt water, so it can't bring pathogens into this aquarium. It's just a really, really good first food. It's full of protein, and there's no way that these guys are gonna say no to it. You can see they're already going crazy for it. And this is another thing that I definitely recommend when quarantining new fish, is to feed a really good like live food to fatten the fish up, because a lot of the times, fish can come and they can travel for a very long period of time, and these fish might not have eaten properly for the last two weeks. These guys are probably just having their first decent meal since they've been in transport at a wholesale facility or something like that. And this is just a really important process. So I'm gonna give these guys a nice, decent feed of baby brine shrimp. I'm just gonna talk about a few more things in regards to quarantining. So another thing I wanted to talk about is worms. So worms can be also a problem with bringing in new fish. Now, this is why having a quarantine tank is so important because what you're gonna to wanna to do is with each new species you bring in, you wanna basically just separate that fish into its own different tank. And you basically just wanna have a quarantine tank in your fish room. And the reason for this is because you don't have to actually go ahead and do all the things that I did. These are all just preventative measures. So by just alienating the fish and watching them for a very good period of time, like maybe a month to two months before you introduce them into another aquarium, you're gonna spot pretty much any of the problems that a fish is gonna likely bring into your fish room. So when I talk about worms, what I like to do with my fish is add two chemicals. So I'll add levamisole and I'll also add praziquantel and that's gonna kill either tapeworms or roundworms or nematodes and that's gonna kill diseases like tapeworms which make the fish do those white stringy poops or it's gonna kill those camelanus worms which hang out of the fish's anus. Those two chemicals work very, very well and I like to use those to make sure that the fish aren't bringing in any internal parasites. And that's about it for the medications that I like to do. I like to do that potassium permanganate treatment and I also like to treat for the tapeworms and roundworms and nematodes and things like that with the praziquantel and the levamisole which I'm not gonna do right now because these neon tetras probably don't need it. But I'm gonna leave these Neon Tetris in this tank for a very long period of time and I'm not gonna be sharing nets with other tanks from this tank. I'm gonna be making sure that this tank is on its own system. And I'm just gonna monitor these guys and if there's any fish that have problems, I'm gonna pull them out. And that's just basically what quarantining is. It's very important to make sure that your fish don't have any issues long term. And it's something that I highly recommend, but I hope you guys did learn something from this video and you know learned about the process of how I do things because this is how I personally quarantine fish. I mean, I do it different for everything. Like I was saying before, if I was gonna get, say, some quarries, I'd just introduce them to this tank, make sure nothing's going wrong with the quarries after about a month, and then I could introduce them to another tank. But with these guys, just because they're a Neon Tetra and they're so prone to having so many issues, I really wanna secure some good brood stock, and I'm just being super pedantic about making sure that these guys don't bring anything in that's gonna affect any of my other fish or affect each other over the long period of time. I just wanna nuke everything that's in these fish and be left with the best quality fish at the end. So you can see they're all eating that baby brine shrimp. They're gonna fatten up and there's gonna be some really awesome videos coming out in the future with breeding these guys. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a thing or two about quarantining and I'll see you guys in the next one.